So we're at the Darwin Pioneer Cemetery today to have a look. As you can see, not a lot of headstones left here. Apparently, uh, originally there was around 1,200 burials. But now they say there's around 90 headstones left. So there is talk that some of these boundary fences um, actually cut off some of the original cemetery. Um, but yeah, they haven't actually you know, found the graves on the outside, but for there to be 1,200 graves in this small plot of land, I think there would have had to be a little bit more, but it's been encroached on by business over the years. So it was first officially opened in Darwin um, and was known as the Palmerston Cemetery. So it was proposed in 1869 and the first burials uh, we're around 1872 or 1873 and the cemetery closed in 1919 so we're just going to have a little walk around here and see what we can see so according to wikipedia there was around 1230 burials here but 450 of them aren't registered with births deaths or marriages Now the occupants here of these graves include a wide range of people from Darwin, infants and adults from many different cultural backgrounds. These include Chinese, Japanese and Malay people. Causes of death for people here are listed as drownings, stillbirths and suicide as well as obviously the usual reasons people would pass away, accidents, other illnesses, old age, all of that sort of thing. One of the first occupants they say is Charles Harvey who died on the 4th of the 10th 1872 and I'm going to walk around here and see if I can find his grave. And also in November of 1872 Trooper William Davies was taken by a crocodile off Lamaru Beach and he's apparently here as well. So I'll just have a little walk around and see who we can find and then I'll do some more research when I get home. We've got here Mary, the beloved wife of Robert Stott of Burundi who died February 11th 1901 age 35 also Lily Duggan Stott beloved daughter of the above who died 3rd of March 1901 age 5 weeks sleep to the troubles of life sleep hearts sleep but to the mercy of God did you keep so a lot of these cemeteries mention um, dying at Palmerston because this was originally the Palmerston Cemetery. There's now several cemeteries in Darwin. There's this one, there's the Garden Cemetery that holds a lot of World War I and II uh, people that passed away during the war. That's a little bit closer into town. I'm not sure if I'll get in there or not. Um, there's also the current cemetery that they use looks like a little child's grave here under the tree. In lovely, loving memory of Grandma Emmeline something gone. I can't see what day they died but it's age 66. It's a very small grave for an adult person. Gong sounds like it's possibly an Asian name. So is there. This one here this looks like a very old headstone. Erected to the memory of John Rickaby, age 49, died the 11th to the 10th 09 by the employees of Daly River Smeltel, Smelter. Daly River probably. I might have a look at that when we get home see if there's a story attached.
Over here we've got loving memory of dear sister, of my dear sister, Daisy Florence Lindsay. Died 3rd of June 1913, aged 33 years at rest. That's a really nice headstone, that one. And then maybe these are more family plots, but they've lost their details over the years. I'm guessing that across the back here, where there, you can see no headstones, there would have been a lot of headstones. Maybe they were timber. They've just been lost to time. Okay, we've got William James Kerr Bell. Now it looks like there's a bit of a story about him here. A little bit hard to read. One of the headstones is tipped over, which must have been a child, which says 14th of October 1915, age four months. But we'll have a look at what this plaque says. It says, James Bell sailed from Scotland on the clipper ship Naval Reserve with his parents and siblings, arriving in Queensland the 27th of July, 1865. James and his two wives had 13 children. His first wife, Emily Alice Catt, died in 1891, and Fanny Eliza Tippett, born Reedsdale, New South Wales, married James in 1895 at Rockhampton. James and Fanny Bell moved to Broome, Western Australia, where James was a storeman. They took passage on the SS Wayhoy with children Dulcie, Oliver, Ivy, Violet, Lilius, arriving in Darwin on the 28th of October 1907. Early 1908, the first of the three Territorian children, a daughter, Heather, was born. James managed the, the Borrelula store for a stint before moving his family to Pine Creek. The Playford Club Hotel, Pine Creek. James was the licensee during 1908 to 1910. Fanny's father had been a miner and she often rode out on horseback prospecting. Their infant daughter, Heather, survived a fever epidemic originating from the Umbrawarra tin field. The following year, James relinquished the license and the family returned to Darwin. The Palmerston Club Hotel, Darwin. James held the license from 1910 to 1915 when the supply of liquor was nationalised. As a farewell gesture, he hosted five, sorry, he hosted a festive dinner for friends and patrons. For a while, James was the councillor of the District Council of Palmerston. The Bell Tea Rooms, Darwin. A two-storey corner store built by James in 1915 was demolished in 1939. Periodically Fanny managed the tea rooms. James moved to Marinboy, managing Walter P.C. Bell's store until it closed. He retired to Darwin, living quietly with the family until his death in 1934. Fanny died in 1968, age 95. Some of their descendants still live in the top end. It's a really nice plaque they've put there. There's a picture of them on a horse and cart. So yeah, it's pretty good. So it's William Kerr, James Kerr Bell, died 14th of October 1913, aged four months. God is love. And then there's James Bell, 20th of September 1850. Uh, 11th of February 1934 his wife Fanny Eliza Bell Neen Tippett 13th of September 1873 to 13th of November 1968 and their son Clive Oliver Bell 1st of July 1901 to the 29th of August 1963 gone but not forgotten so that's an interesting family plot with a little bit of information about it now this one here is an interesting one. I've never seen a headstone like this. So this is sacred to the memory of William Fife Davidson, late Chief Engineer of SS Empire, who died at sea, 23rd of December 1912, aged 42 years, erected by his shipmates and friends. Wow. It's a, a very interesting headstone. It's got the ship's wheel as well as the propeller carved into the top. How nice. Now this is, it's got a nice angel up here on the top. 
broken wings, unfortunately, which just happens over time. It says, in memory of Thomas Crush, beloved husband of Francis Crush, of Brocks Creek, Northern Territory, born 1865, died August 27, 1913, who represented the Northern Territory in the South Australian Parliament for two years in the interest of the Labor Party. The quality of a man's manhood is determined by his conduct. Now, I think I did read about him being the first Labor Party member that was in the Northern Territory. So it also says, loving the truth, he hated wrong. So he lived, so he died. His life, alas, was shortened that he only saw the promise of harvest whose seed he helped so faithfully to sow. So he was obviously an esteemed politician, unlike some of our politicians today. This is in loving memory of Nicholas Holtz, late government secretary and curator of the Botanic Gardens, dearly loved husband of Annie Holtz, died May 24th, 1919, age 45, I think. Resting, says. We might get down to the Botanic Gardens a bit later, I'm not sure I'd like to. In loving memory of my husband Edward Luxton, who passed away to rest 5th of March 1913. So, considering there's not a lot of headstones left here, there's certainly some interesting ones. This one here, right on the edge of the graveyard, is sacred to the memory of Frederick Hildebrand Stevens, born 6th of July 1887, died 11, December 11th, 1887, suffered little children to come unto me. So that was obviously around a six month old child. So this one here, down the front of this one, it says, in remembrance of Hildebrand William Havelock Stevens, Northern Territory Pioneer, 1871 to 1903, pastoralist, businessman, founder of the live cattle export trade from Darwin in 1885. Born England 1852, died Singapore 1942, aged 90, 90 years. This plaque commemorates his contribution to the early development of the Northern Territory, placed here by his descendants in 2005. Well, that's nice for them to have put a plaque. It doesn't say who that child belonged to, but possibly his son or you know but the, the family have laid a plaque there to remember him as well and his contribution I have no idea about this grave I can't see any plaques but I can see these huge concrete filled cylinders with hooks out of them I have no idea um who that's for or why they would mark a grave in that way that's interesting I might walk over here and have a look at some of these older graves this one looks rather old I think it says in memory of J Devlin but I can't see anything else there of what it says. It's made out of concrete, that one. This one is Hannah Wood, died 16th, July 16th, 1903, aged 77 years. A lot of them have had these big concrete borders put around them, I've noticed. I'm not quite sure why. 
maybe just to further protect them from being damaged by um, you know mowers and things like that this one here Ryan a memorial to pioneers Jeremiah died Palmerston Northern Territory 17th of 7th 1874 age 33 and his brother Edward died Coward Springs South Australia 8th of the 11th 1893 age 58 erected by their descendants in 1988 so obviously they've found out and it's put here this one is the big one in the ground here that's been embedded in concrete to try and preserve it sacred to the memory of George G McLaughlin JP um, junior surveyor in the Northern Territory who died 19th of March 1873 age I think it says 50 years but I'm not 100% sure this cross was erected by his brother and I can't see the rest of it that's good the way they've actually embedded that in concrete to try and preserve it from being deteriorated anymore now over here looks like we have a reasonably new little headstone but I think it's probably been here and they've had it replaced yes it says Henriette Mardell Granboom Arts 18th of April 1882 to the 22nd June I 1914 so I'm guessing that was that that name kind of sounds like some sort of European name, maybe maybe Dutch or German, something like that. I don't know. And here we've got a little little cover. Oh, and it tells us here. Where the graves are. Okay, this says, jumping. Government graves is something new and is probably peculiar to the Northern Territory. It appears that owing to the cemetery being situated on very rocky ground, the government have found it desirable to have two or three graves dug in advance so that when a death occurs amongst persons who have no friend here, it is possible to have the interments carried out without too much delay. Also, without the great expense, which has sometimes been incurred when graves have had to be dug in a hurry. But the disadvantage of the present arrangement is that persons wanting a grave for a deceased relation, instead of digging one themselves, are apt to jump one of the government graves and then what redress there is until, sorry, unless the government proceed in a court of law to recover the cost of the said grave. They had a loss of this kind lately and have borne it without much grumbling. But in the case of general sickness, the public will no doubt be prevented from taking possession of government graves. That was written in the Northern Territory Times, Friday, March 27th, 1874. Apparently the ground was really, um, really hard here. And that's why they took, you know, several days sometimes to be able to dig a grave. Um, so then down at first it says, to the editor, dear sir, being struck with unkempt appearance of the Palmerston Cemetery, I'm led to ask you to consider it a mark of respect to the memory of the old deceased Territorians to allow them to be buried without any token being placed upon their graves to distinguish one from another. There appears to me some dozens of graves, the occupants of which are unknown to anybody, and as I believe no plan of the cemetery has been kept, there is no possibility of ever finding out, and I think therefore it would be proper to put a stop to further confusion in this sort in some way or other, especially so in regard to the graves of persons, who when in the flesh were of considerable value in helping the territory along but who have died without next of kin to hand to do for them which i now hold should be done by their friends here a notable instance is the case of phil j Clymer, lately deceased he was one of the few exertions in all weathers and under hard trials give excellent promise of being lasting benefit to the place he died just when a fortune had begun to smile on him as he does not seem to have any left relations 
behind to acknowledge his last resting place. I shall only be too happy to tender my quota towards providing a headstone for his grave so that his memory may not be entirely blotted out and I hope a movement will be set on foot for the purpose. Yours truly, an old hand. Northern Australian, Friday, 2nd of October, 1885. So it appears that lots of people were getting buried here and they weren't keeping a plan and they weren't um, putting markers to say who they were, which is um, interesting as well. So up here it says, welcome to Palmerston Cemetery. Palmerston Cemetery has an intrinsic value to the community by virtue of its ability to reflect the changing cultural attitudes to burials and use of cemeteries. It is recorded, it's recorded history on the site and elsewhere at a further dimension to the understanding of the territory's past. The chronological list of persons buried in Palmerston before and after 1902 provides a basis from which facets of the territory's past can be addressed. Difficulties in living in a tropical climate and what was at the time considered a remote community may be inferred from the numbers and causes of death, whereas the variety of age, sex, former occupations and deceased provide significant data in determining the population profile. The Palmerston Cemetery provides a tangible reminder of the exploits and lives of many who have contributed to the development of the Territory. Each grave represents the last resting place of people whose contribution co collectively is important to the interpretation of the Territory and Darwin's historical and social cultural background. Palmerston Cemetery was declared a heritage place on the 7th of May 1997. So there's a map there of where all the burials are. And then we have a list over here. So there's quite a lot of people on that list. And these are obviously the graves that they know where these people are and the graves that are left, I think. It says where the stars are, it says memorial only, grave sites unknown. So that's interesting too. So we'll go for a bit of a walk down here and have a look at what other graves we can find. Oh, it's a pretty balmy hot day here in Darwin, as it usually is. It's about 31 degrees, quite humid because there's been a considerable amount of rain. came up here over the last couple of days on the GAN, a trip I could thoroughly recommend to anybody. GAN's a train that goes up through from Adelaide to Darwin, through Central Australia. Sacred to the memory of Anna, the beloved wife of Gilbert R. McMinn and daughter of Alfred and Maria Sophia Gore, who died December 25th, 1880, aged 27 years. And Willie, infant son of CNR, G.R. and Anna McMinn, who died 1878, aged seven months. So many people lost their children. Back in those days, it was hard for them to survive sometimes. You can imagine these hot areas that they came through as pioneers. And often they came from England, Scotland, Ireland, so they were used to much cooler weather. This one is Donald Sinclair, died 6th of May 1915. That's memory to Harry Frederick, much loved husband of Marjorie Davies, 18... 1915, aged 40 years. Such a shame that so many of the headstones are missing. This 
one has no plaque at all, but I can only assume that it would be a relative of this one since they're in the same sort of plot. This one is in loving memory of Harry Sanford Linton, born 29th of February 1860, died 19th of October 1915. This is a nice big headstone. Says Margaret, the wife, beloved wife of Edward Stratton, who departed this life August 1880, aged 30 years, leaving her husband and five children to mourn her loss. That would be hard on any husband to have to continue to raise five children on his own. This one's got a particularly nice iron fence around it. Charles Weston Lees, second son of the late Edward Lees of County Dublin, Ireland, who died at Palmerston November 7th, 1880, at 35 years. Well, I've had a drink and a sit down, and I've read the listing of all the graves that are still in the cemetery. And I found that the first man listed as buried here, his gravestone no longer is here. And also the trooper that was taken by a crocodile, his grave is no longer here. So it's disappointing. But anyway, there's still plenty of other graves here we can have a look at. This one is Frederick Charles Killian, who departed this life 5th of April 1916, aged 79 years, erected by his loving wife and children. Now this one just says, Oh, I see, there's uh, down the bottom. So it says Nicholas. Um, I'll look at that surname in a minute. Died the 22nd of the 5th, I'm guessing 1916. It looks like um, Nicholas P A L A. S E S, so I'm not sure if that's right. Palaces, maybe, but very hard to read. This is interesting. Someone is Joseph Bradshaw. Pioneer in the Northern Territory, Obit 1916, and somebody's left some coins there. Not quite sure why. I'll have a look at what's, since he was a pioneer of the Northern Territory, I'll have a look when I get home of what, um, what area he was in and what have you, and see if I can find some details about him. Oh, this one's interesting. There's a headstone with Chinese writing on it, so clearly I have no idea what it says, but it's interesting. And apparently there's quite a few Chinese, Japanese and Malay people buried here that were early pioneers here. This one is Theodore. Dan something. I can't quite read that either. It's a little bit 
some of these concrete ones that doesn't really last the writing but also died in 1916 it's very similar to the other headstone I just had a look at you can see why they wanted to build these dig these graves you know and have a couple ready all the time back then because this ground is really hard and rocky This one here looks like a really interesting headstone. H. O. Childs, oh, something like that. It looks like it's got some Chinese writing written right down the center of it, but it's really worn and really hard to see. And then it's got a lot of rocks piled up over the actual gravesite itself. But yeah, that's a very interesting headstone, that one. Look over here. I'm on the lookout for some deadly plovers that are flying around over the back end of the cemetery there. They attacked Dave a couple of times. This is Henry Otto Killian, who died November 20th, 1890, in his 21st year. And it's also got, in loving memory of our dear, beloved mother, A.A. A. Killian, died 22nd November 1926, a resident, 53 years, erected by AFC. I'm not sure who that is. I won't do all these graves because I think it would make the video too long. I'm just trying to pick out some interesting ones. This one is Martina Homura, infant son of C. Homura, died September 12th, 1894, aged seven weeks. Wow. That's an interesting grave too. I can see an interesting one across here that we might just have a quick look at. This one just says Spain, Rock of Ages. And it says in loving memory of Felix Spain died 17th to 12th 1966. That's a really interesting headstone that one. This is Arthur Edwin, dear son of George and Annie Goodman, died at Palmerston 1901, aged nine months. And also George Goodman. And there's this plaque in there that says Elizabeth. I think it's Sabrina or Sabima Goodwin, aged 75 years. There's a small grave with a pillow in it. Not quite sure what that's what's happening there. I can see a couple of these graves over here. These ones made of metal. Some sort of steel ones. But the, uh, the inscriptions have long gone. There's another one over here. This is Sarah Lee Hangong, born April 23rd, 1844 and died 1911, age 68. I can hear the plovers. It's not great seeing these plovers. Especially when they're nesting and they feel like they need to protect their eggs.
So there are some more headstones here to look at. Um, I'm going to wrap up this video now because there's not much else I can say about the people here. But I will put a collage of all the photos of the headstones up at the end of the video for anybody that wants to maybe see um, a grave, maybe something you're particularly looking for for an ancestor. I might be able to get a photo of the grave for them. There's another Chinese grave over here. We, oh, it looks like there's a few Chinese graves in this area. So I'll finish up on that one and I will see if I can zoom in on these plovers. The ones that are being very territorial at the moment, making our visit to the cemetery a bit difficult another Chinese headstone across the back there anyway that's a quick overview of the Darwin Pioneer Cemetery if anyone would like any information or a picture of any of the headstones here that might want to add to ancestry or what have you let me know and I will forward them on to you if you like our videos like and subscribe as always and pass on to your friends anyone that has an interest in old cemeteries until next time see you later